I get this question a lot. Take a look at these three Excel files that I'm working with. Each of these Excel files has a few junk rows on the top and I'd like to remove the junk rows and then combine the data from multiple Excel files. Take a look, we have 2007 Excel file. It has got two junk rows on the top and I'd like to remove that and combine the data. This is 2006 Excel file. It has got four junk rows on the top. I'd like to remove those and then combine the data. And here we just have one junk row. I'd like to remove that and then combine the data. The tricky part in this problem is that we have inconsistent number of junk rows on every single Excel file that we have. So we need a mechanism to be able to handle that. Let's just go take a look. How do we solve this type of problem? No further ado, let's start. All right, people, I'm in Excel right here. Let's just go connect to that folder that contains the three files. So data, get data from file from a folder. That's my folder. Click on open and that is going to give me the preview of the three files. So at the moment I cannot combine, so I'm gonna click on transform data and that is going to land me in the Power Query window and I'll start to work with those files. Now, even before I start to do all of the magic of the M language, let's just start to understand the bare fundamentals as to what logic are we going to form. So for now, I'm gonna pick up, let's say 2006 Excel file, which is right here, start to clean that manually, a bit manually, and then pack that logic and apply it to the rest of the Excel files as well and hopefully that should work. So I'm gonna click on the binary right here to load that table. Uh, it shows the table uh, right here, which is the data of that Excel file. And I can see that there are a couple of junk rows on the top. I'm gonna click on the table to load the table and start to work only with this table at the moment. All right, if you've worked enough with Power Query, you understand that you have a function on the top right here, remove rows and remove top rows. And that gives you the ability to declare how many rows you'd like to remove from the top. The problem is that this particular formula is going to hard code the number of rows that you would like to remove and we do not really have that. So I need to come up with a logic to tell Power Query that this is where you should stop removing the rows. So for example, go take a look at row number one, row number two, row number three, row number four. And as soon as you get to the headers, that is where you should stop removing the rows. But for Power Query to understand, we also have to supply some bit of header understanding to Power Query. How would Power Query understand that these are the headers of your data? So what I'm going to do is, first of all, create a custom column right here. So add column, custom column, and start to play around with my data. So I'm going to write an underscore right here. An underscore simply means a record, not always in the context of the table. So currently, we are working with a table and we are writing an underscore. So underscore simply means one row. One row means one record. So if I now click on OK at the moment, I'm going to get a record. Record is nothing but the row of the data. And that's the entire row of the data with all the columns that I have. Now, I cannot really work with records at the moment because records contains the values and the headers. I just want to work with the values. So I'm going to convert the record into a list so that it becomes more convenient to work with that. There happens to be a function called record.toList. I'm going to use that and start to work with that. Click on OK. And the record that I had received, it has now become a list. Now, if you take a look at the list in row number five, I can see that this list actually contains the headers that I have. Now, how do I tell Power Query that at this particular position, you have to stop, you know, removing the rows from the top? So I need to kind of perform some check. And the check is going to be performed by another function called list.containsAny. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say that, hey, now that you have a list, why don't you check that the list contains any of the possible headers or not? So let's just say that I'm going to write something like this. All right, what I've done is written a very simple function with list.containsAny. And all that I'm trying to say is that, hey, you have a list that you are working with, which is right here. Why don't you check in this list that do you have any of the two headers or not, date and profit? I mean, to increase the probability that the headers are caught, you can write more number of headers as well. But for now, I have just written two. That means in the list, if you do find date and profit, that is the legit header row and you can just maybe stop removing the rows from the top. Now, if I maybe press on OK at the moment, you can see that I get a false, 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 and that's where I get a true. That is where it did find the profit, and on the left-hand side, it did find the date as well. All right, once I've received a bunch of trues and falses with list.containsAny, now I will start to feed this particular function in the table.skip function, which can skip the number of rows, but based on a condition. Before I start to write the table.skip function, let's just try to understand that how that function works. So table.skip can continue to skip or remove the rows till the time the condition becomes false, not true. 
false. So it's going to say that, hey, this does not contain the header. So yeah, that is true. That's going to be removed. This also does not contain the headers. That is true. So true, 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 true. And as soon as this becomes false, it is going to stop removing the rows from here. But the problem is, according to the logic that we have built, we are generating a true here. So we need to invert this particular logic. And that's going to be very, very easy. All that I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to say that whatever logic is generated by list dot contains any, please inverse that. I'm going to write a not at the start, and that is going to invert the logic. Click on OK. And what we have been able to get is just the inverse of what we have received. Now, this formula that we have it right here, we can feed this formula into the table dot skip function to skip the number of rows as soon as you hit the first false. Take a look. So I'm going to make a new step right here and I'm going to say something like table dot skip and in table dot skip. The first part is which table would you like to skip, which is nothing but added custom. That is my previous step right here. And in that I would like to use this formula that I have written right here. So control C on that come back right here and I'm going to maybe paste that formula and that is the condition that you have to use to skip the number of rows. I close, I press enter and you see that the number of rows have been skipped. So all the rows that matched the true, they were skipped. As soon as you got the first false, that is where Power Query stopped to skip the rows. Now, what we can do is we can copy this particular piece of logic and this is the logic that we can apply it to all the tables that we are working with. All right, to be able to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this particular query and work with that. So I'm going to get rid of all of the steps that we have and I'm going to get back to the source. And that is where we had the three tables, 2005 table, six table and seven table. And that's where I had to kind of do my magic. But at the moment, these are not tables that Power Query can read it. These are the binary Excel files, right? That these are binaries. So I need to convert the binaries into a table first before I can start to work with them. So a very simple function. So I'm just going to create a new step and I'm going to say something like table dot transform columns and I am trying to go inside this particular column called the content column and every single binary should be converted into a table so that I can read it and the formula for that is excel dot workbook so I'm going to say something like excel dot workbook um, and this is going to be wrapped in the content column I have to tell which column that I'm trying to work with of course and that is pretty good close the bracket close the bracket and press enter miss the bracket right here press enter and now what we have been able to get is nothing but a table in which the sheet lies so if I can expand that table click on OK and that is where I can take a look at the table where ideally I have to skip the number of rows so that's my first table that's my second table inconsistent number of rows and that is my third table now what do we do? We create a new column, add column, a custom column. And the formula that we used just a while ago was table.skip. In table.skip, if you remember, the first part was a table. In which table would you like to skip the rows? So here is a table, here is a table, and here is another table. All of these three tables are there in the data column. So I'm going to say something like table.skip, and I'm going to say the column that I'm trying to work with is data, which contains the three tables. In each row of the table, I'd like to write the logic that I just copied from there. And that's pretty much it. I can close the brackets and hopefully this should work. Click on OK. It again gives me a table. But if you peek into the table, you can see that all the junk rows are skipped. All the junk rows are skipped and all the junk rows are skipped. Now, before I start to combine the three tables, of course, I have to promote the headers. And for that, there is a very simple function called table.promote headers. So I can wrap the entire thing in table.promote headers and close the bracket in the end and that's kind of good to go click on okay my spelling was incorrect table dot promote headers i just corrected that and you can see that the headers are now promoted nice and easy and i can now combine the three tables now i'll tell you a trick i can create a new step and i can say hey the three tables that i'd like to combine are in the custom column and i'm going to use a function called table dot combine start the bracket added custom is the name of the previous step in the previous step, I have a column called custom, which contains the three tables that I'd like to combine. And I'm going to maybe in the square bracket, write the name of the column, close the bracket, press enter. And here are all the three tables combined with the top junk rows removed. That is pretty damn awesome. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one. In case you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment. 
and I'm going to be glad to reply. In the end, a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. In case you are starting out your journey with Power BI and you'd like to learn the fundamentals really good, Power Query, Data Modeling, DAX, and then move on to solving more dense, more complicated problems, even of your own data, my course is going to be highly beneficial in giving me the confidence of attacking problems in a logical way. I suggest that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super helpful. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye now.